So we bought a, uh, a Mako Pro Skiff 17. We're gonna be doing a lot of filming on it. This is uh, the new boat. All right, well, welcome back to the channel. We have not been posting as regular as I would hope. We got some cool videos coming up. We got a sailfish video. Just went out and caught my first sailfish. So stay tuned for that one. It's probably already up on the channel. Go check that one out. Point of this video today is just kind of go over, for one, introduce our, our new boat here and all the installs we're gonna be doing on it and videos we're gonna be doing on our Sea Fox as well. We did get two boats. We moved out here to Florida and getting two boats was something uh, you know we knew we were gonna to wanna to do. Boat to get offshore and then a boat for the inshore stuff. Uh, we live right here on the Indian River in Sebastian, Florida. So I'm minutes from the boat launch and uh, so getting the inshore skiff is uh, something that makes a lot of sense. We bought a Mako Pro Skiff 17. Done a lot of uh, thinking on it and, uh, you know, debating on what kind of a inshore boat we wanted. And uh, this one kind of made the most sense for me and, and uh, my family and the ability to get in shallow is just something I can't do with the Sea Fox. And this boat drafts very little water. I mean, you can float in less than a foot of water. It's a great fishing platform. Large bow deck and nice sized rear deck. It's also economical. The cost on this, of course, like everything has gone up, but uh, it's still a relatively cheap and affordable boat. You stayed with the 60 horse. I'm a big fan of the 60. It's one of Mercury's most problem-free motors, I would say. You know, I'm a certified Mercury mechanic, if you guys don't know that already. I work in the marine industry, so uh, this channel has a lot of boat how-tos, as well as fishing videos. Because so I'm not an expert fisherman by any means. It's just literally real-life fishing. I'm learning, especially out here. I've been a fisherman a very long time, but I've only been in Florida about a year and I haven't got to do as much fishing as I would like to have done. Anyway, check out the channel if you're new. Please subscribe if you like it, and uh, please give it a thumbs up. But uh, we're gonna just go over the, the Mako before we start doing all these installs. The installs were starting actually today. Uh, we're gonna go over these installs that I'm doing. I'm installing a 24 volt Minkota Chirova Riptide. And so we're gonna go over the battery wiring. Uh, we're putting in a battery switch for the trolling motor, an on off switch. We're putting in a battery charger. We're also swapping out the steering wheel. I got some uh, interior lighting going on, an accessory switch panel. We have a, a Stick It Shallow Water Anchor, a Garmin 74SV we're installing. Kicker stereo system. I got a kicker head unit and I'm putting in four kicker speakers with the lights inside them. Guide-ons and they're lit up on the top. So that's a, that's all the stuff going on the skiff just right now. I mean, right out of the gate, we're putting all that on. There'll be some more stuff to come, but that's pretty much the bulk of the installs going in on this and how I would want to set it up and trick it out. We also got a lot of videos coming up on the Sea Fox as well. We got over here, we're doing a 100 hour service. It's a 200 Yamaha XP. But we got some water in the fuel last trip out. So we're gonna be testing for water in the fuel also changing the fuel water separator out. And then we're totally upgrading the stereo system on that boat as well. Putting in two amps. Uh, we got a six channel amp for the speakers already installed on that boat. We got a mono amp for the sub we're gonna be installing and, uh, and all the wiring that goes with that. I also have an automatic trim tab controller from Electrotab. So we're gonna be wiring that up. I have a Linco system, but this is goes with the Linco as well. 
So we're gonna be wiring that up and testing all that out. So stay tuned for all that stuff. But again, back to the point of this video and that's to introduce our new skip. Now, first off, I'm very familiar with Mako and the problems that they have gone through in the last years and for a little while. But uh, they do have the best warranty in the business. Uh, the gel coat warranty is far above anybody else that I'm aware of. Structurally, it's lifetime. They do have issues with the gel coat, so it's a good thing they do have the best warranty because you're probably going to use it. Uh, the interior, everything else like that, uh, you know, it has a great warranty as well, especially like me, I upgraded the warranty. Same thing with the Mercury. I went with the extended Mercury warranty, so I have seven years on all of that. So we're just going to go over the boat and kind of point out some of the things that I like and uh, the things that, uh, you know, we're going to be changing and fixing and stuff along the way. Like I said, it's got a nice big uh, deck up here for, for fishing, large storage up here where the two batteries are going to be, but you can put all kinds of stuff in this storage up here. Something that other boats in this class don't have. Uh, nice area for mounting trolling motor. It's got an anchor locker up front as well for a smaller anchor and rope. We got a, a live well right here, which yes, has an airlock problem. It's already airlocked on me my first trip out. We will be doing the repair of that on the channel as well. I'll show you how to fix that problem. We will be upgrading the uh, steering to hydraulic steering. It's something in salt water you should probably do or order your boat with the hydraulic steering. Uh, I'm gonna be swapping that out probably within the next year, but the cable steer will last quite a while if you take care of it. I upgraded the seat. It's got the flip back seat rest, back rest. Um, cooler, basic igloo cooler. I did put a bigger nine gallon fuel tank in it. It is portable. Some guys put in a hatch right here so you don't have to slide this out, but I like the portability of it. I can put this in the back of my truck and go fill it up the day before, week before and not have to even worry about towing the boat down to the gas station and messing with all that. The thing I like about the 17 skiff is that it's got the, uh, the rear live well back here. This one works a lot better than that front one, but it still can airlock. So we're just gonna do the airlock fix on both uh, live wells at the same time. And again, it's got the 60 horse. It's pretty much problem free, like any uh, thing you know, you outboard now, you do have to wash your fuel. The ethanol fuel is horrible for the outboards if you don't treat it. Um, and if you don't use it, it's gonna go bad on you. That's really the only thing you have to worry about. And of course, flushing it out every trip and uh, using some uh, salt away or salt off and flushing that through every once in a while. That's pretty much it I mean there's that's it's a bare bones fishing boat I mean not a lot of uh, stuff to go over we'll just show you the insides of these compartments and stuff like that and uh, we'll get to doing these installs but inside I'm gonna climb up in here it will fit in your garage I'll have to watch my head in here though uh, with a swing tongue you'll have no problem if you put a swing tongue on it I may end up doing that I'll make a video of it if I do but uh, yeah it's a uh, Pretty much, you know, just a basic skiff. It does have a battery switch here, which is nice. Master power switch, you know, and then of course just your standard switches, bilge lights, aerators, and a horn and a 12 volt receptacle. A basic tack, that's all you really need. And uh, of course there's no fuel gauge, but it's a portable tank, and that's it. You got your controls, trim. Nice little grab bar right here, which I'll use to mount GoPros, and I got a little clamp on uh, cup holder, because you only got the one cup holder here, and uh, you know, a uh, cell phone holder. You got four rod holders on this side, one rod holder on the other side, and that's due to the motion of your control box. You can't have a bunch of rods over here. We'll go up front, I'll show you that big storage. large storage in here. One of the upgrades they made uh, with 
this model 17 when they changed the the design of the the hole in the interior a little bit they put a chase through here the older models didn't have this chase so you can pop this out and run wiring uh, which we're going to be doing here shortly running wire to the to the helm and and everything like that it does come pre-wired for a trolling motor technically this should have the switch on it the battery switch already but mine didn't so I'm, whatever I'm gonna install my own it's got the gas lift support struts so it holds the it holds the door up and you can get your tackle and everything out of here without fighting it and then up here again is the little anchor a rope storage whatever you want to use it for I cut down this anchor so it fit in here and it's like I said the wiring for the trolling motor is already up here they have this nice panel for you to run your wire in or put a plug in I'm not going to make mine removable it's going to be just hard mounted so it's going to be directly wired and also the reason for the battery switch I'm installing pop-up cleats so they're out of the way around all the way around the live well up here which can be used for a cooler if you want put your drinks and stuff in there and use the other one for fish and then that rear live well for your bait and then you just flip that down pop that back there you go this is a horn and uh, you know I I upgraded this mat and it doesn't this is not standard I got that separately here's the rear live well nice size I don't know exactly how many gallons that is but it's a very good size live well for bait I'll probably put a, uh, a light in there, a live well light. So when we do some night trips, go out here on the Indian River at night. It's got a galvanized trailer, so and that's nice. I mean, these trailers don't hold up as well, of course, as an aluminum trailer. But again, if you take care of it, wash it off really well every time you pull it out. Um, don't be lazy about it. They will last a very long time. But if it goes out, I would recommend getting an aluminum trailer. Then up here, one thing I already did upgrade is the bow roller. I've heard customers complaining about the uh, factory roller. It's smaller and uh, it does have a tendency to get caught in this channel right here when you're unloading or loading the trailer. So I swapped it out for this larger one and so far it seems to be working pretty good. But if I have to do something different, I've seen guys put two small bunks right here and kind of just have it like that. That's something I may try if this ends up giving me problems. It is a really dry ride. It's smooth ride actually. So uh, I was kind of impressed by that. Uh, I haven't had a chance to get out on the water too much with these uh, doing any water testing. So uh, when I got the chance and went out, I was actually impressed with how well this rides in chop. It's pretty smooth for a skiff. Um, it's not just a flat bottom. It does have like a tunnel style hole. So you can check that out down there. It's really a nice design. So it actually channels the water and chop pretty well. All right, guys. Well, thanks for checking out this video. Uh, if you like it, I hope you give a thumbs up. And I hope you stay tuned for all the videos coming up for the installs on this video. And uh, check out the channel. And uh, if you like it, please subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one. I tell you, like, Joey, you're just doing a thing. You don't want to be like, go, robot. He's <laughs> alive. <laughs> Got the gas uh, support lifts, or lift support hinges, or struts. Gas lift support struts. All right, guys. Well, thanks for checking out this video. All the all the installs we're doing. See the other videos. I'm gonna start on take two.